Hi, Donna Guest here, Creative Memories Advisor and Lazy Scrapbooker. Let's talk about punches, specifically the Creative Memories Border Punches. These have huge patterns that are so big they won't work with our regular border maker system, so they have to be a standalone punch. They've got these big wings off to the side and I'm going to show you how to use them. Ready to get started? Here's an example of a two-page spread where I used the Baroque frame punch that you see here to create two 12-inch borders on the sides. Let's take a look at how to use this punch. My current favorite Creative Memories border punch is the Baroque frame punch. I love its versatility, so it's going to be the star of this show. When you get a Creative Memories border punch, it's going to come closed. Just flip this switch to release and open the punch. The newer punches are going to have these easy to see black lines on the outside. That tells you where the pattern starts and ends. The older versions of this are going to have the line just on the inside. They actually realized it was a good idea to give us that line. So I'm going to line up my paper with the black line and punch. Okay, so now I've got one perfect punch. The next step, you see the wings out here? They have an image of that pattern. I'm going to line it up over the pattern so that I cover up all the blue pattern. And then I'm going to punch again. Perfect. So now I'm going to finish the rest of this. And it's perfect. Now we've got a great 12 inch border to use. You could leave it on the piece of paper like this, or you can use your trimmer and have a smaller border. Creative Memories offers a big line of these border punches. My advice to you is if you see one that you like, go ahead and get it because they don't keep them around for long. Now, I've shown you how to do a 12 inch border, which you can do with any of the border punches, but there are a few border punches that are special, and these are the border frame punches. So I'm gonna push these border punches out of the way, and we're just going to talk about the border frame punches now. That's the Baroque that we just used, the pedal punch, and the new arch frame punch. So we can create these beautiful photo mats, journaling boxes, title boxes with these frame punches. So let's learn how to do this now. I'm going to show you how to make a photo mat similar to the one that you see here. So that I'm not playing favorites, I'm going to switch from the Baroque frame punch to the pedal frame punch that you see placed here. One thing that you have to remember is that the dimensions of your paper have to have even numbers. So that means six by six, six by eight, four by six, and so forth. The pattern that you see here is two inches wide. That's the reason that you have to have the even numbers. And because the pattern is an inch out from the mat part, you're going to need to increase the size of your paper. So if we wanted to create a mat for a four by six photo, we would need to increase an inch on all sides. So basically just add two inches to the dimensions. Four by six would become six by eight. So I have a six by eight piece of cardstock here in Creative Memories Turkish Blue that I'm going to use. So we'll move this out of the way. I'm using my pedal frame punch, and this works just like the Baroque frame punch. Now, when you're going to create a frame, there's a new little line that you've got to look at. So on this one, there's a line on top of the pattern on these wings. That's where we're going to start and not on the little black line right here just yet. So I'm going to place this here, line it up with that little line that goes across the pattern and punch. Okay, so it looks like I've made a mistake, but I haven't. That's where the pattern's going to stick out over here. So now I'm going to do it the other way that we learned and line up my punched pattern on top of the printed pattern here on the wing and then press again. Looks good. Don't be discouraged if you mess up the first time you try it. I have messed up plenty. Okay, now we're gonna do that a third time. It's a little tricky on the last one because you don't have a lot of paper to hold over here at the right. But hey, that looks great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the paper and punch the second side. So this time we're going to use this line once again. And I'm going to line it up right there. And I'm going to press. Pretty cool. Okay. And so we repeat this process 
Again, lining up the pattern on top of the printed pattern, pressing. And what do we do now? We're going to turn it again. And this time we're going to line it up on the line. Can you kind of see how that works? So we're going to do two more regular punches, then we're going to turn it and do two there. So I'm going to finish this out now. Okay, we've got a perfect photo mat now. I can add it to the page with a special picture that coordinates. I will tell you, that's the perfect size for a 4x6 photo, but as you can see, my photo is the 4D size. If you're familiar with digital cameras, of course, that's when it's 4 inches by 5.33, and that's the way my um, phone takes all of my pictures. It takes great pictures, but they are that 4D size. So, this one might work better with the Baroque. Either way, it looks great. But as you can see, the petal frame makes a little bit bigger of a mat. I've got one more trick using a border frame punch, and it's this magnificent background for your scrapbook page. I'm going to use the Baroque frame punch again and show you how to create this. It's easier than it looks. So I'm going to use one piece of paper my Baroque frame punch, and I'm going to need the most wonderful trimmer in the world, and that's the Creative Memories 12-inch trimmer. So I'll just set that aside. So all you're going to do is just like when you're punching a frame, use this little line out on the wing and line up the edge of your paper and punch. Do the same thing on this corner when you flip the paper around. All right, so I've just punched out one corner. That's all you have to do. Punch out all four corners, and then I'll show you where to go from there. Okay, now we've got our paper punched out. And so all we need to do now is trim off the excess so that it looks like this. So we're going to use the 12-inch trimmer. And if you don't have this trimmer yet, oh my goodness, it is the best on the market. We're going to line up our paper so that this edge right here, this little corner, is on our cutting line. And then, because this is a safety blade, you have to press down on it for it to cut. So I can move it freely without cutting my paper. I'm going to look, there's a little, if you can see this, there's a little white line that shows you where the blade is. So I'm going to match that line to the edge of the paper here, press down, and then release when I get to the other end of the paper that's sticking out right here. And isn't that perfect? So easy. So now I'm going to repeat for my other three sides. And there you have it. I've made all four cuts and now you have a beautiful piece of paper ready to go onto a contrasting background. It was a really easy trick to do, doesn't take a lot of time and makes a beautiful page. I hope you've learned lots of new tricks with the Creative Memories border punches. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to click the subscribe button down there to make sure that you get more of my videos. Thanks so much and happy scrapbooking.